Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it Good run it Wednesday up, morning, our back. final day up, here in the L.A. studios. Back, yeah, Anybody yeah. want to say anything? Uh, about that or final time of the season many more to come wow you know, this is a beautiful <laughs> setup that they have for us i'm excited to be here with all of you fine gentlemen what's and, happening and women. What? i was kidding um <laughs> I, 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 I hope that's I'm, Shab Sharania, that by the way no. i love i love the studio it was like a it, toast we never got la weather we came here we know, did 40 it 40 times june gloom baby the Eddie last two months Taylor overcast Parsons. it's much more beautiful in chicago san antonio Thank you. new york new york actually right no now. New York's air right now is having a problem. Anyways, what are we doing? We have a game. We finally have a game. We've been here for a couple days, and now we get to talk about something happening tonight. Finally, numero three down in Miami. Shams, you're going to be there. What are you looking forward to? What do you think is going to happen? Well, definitely, I love, like, the crowd, the atmosphere in Miami. I've been covering games in Miami since 2013, my first NBA Finals. It gets rowdy down there. It gets <laughs> crazy. I can't wait to be there. But to me, I want to see the role players on both teams. You, on Miami side, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Max Struess. The, the series is going to be decided by the role players. I think we're at this juncture. We know what Nikola Jokic is going to bring. I think Jamal Murray is going to have a, a, a bounce-back game in Game 3 up to his all, all-star elite-type status. Jimmy Butler, we know what he's going to do. Bam Adebayo has been stellar so far this series. But on Denver side, KCP, uh, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, seeing which of those guys steps up. Um, and shout out to Gabe Vincent. He's oh, going to yeah. go into free agency this summer. It's clear he's earned himself a, a big contract. This guy's averaging 21 points per game, almost five threes. His splits are crazy, 58, 56, 100 from the, three point, uh, from the free throw line. Uh, he's, he's been big time uh, for the Heat. Sean, you got a little pep in your step today. Yeah, what's like, happening right now? You got a little, you you got double, a double opium? latte? Yeah, no, what do you have? No, 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 no I, I think you, you inspired me. You know? Okay, you I'll take me. that. Chandler inspired someone? Yeah, yeah. He, he told me about, you know, the ways Thank of, you. of how you can be energetic. Shams is going to Miami tonight. That's oh. right. You got a table He's at 11? Right. What do you got, Shams? No, absolutely not. That's no, but I, I agree with Shams. I think tonight, uh, it's the start is huge, right? Miami's been getting off to bad starts. The Heat have been... Uh, you know, <laughs> they, they got to get off to a good start. They got to get this crowd engaged early. And I agree with Shams. At this point, you know what the stars are going to give you. You know the scouting reports. You know the game plan. So I really look forward to, like, Jimmy Butler getting off to a hot start, doing all those little things, getting on the floor, setting the tone early. Because this is a team that they depend on their physicality, their defense to slow it down. And they have to be able to, to, to do that tonight. <laughs> Um, and what if he goes 7 for 19? You know, okay. again, 7 for 19 is not a horrible game. People right. are talking about that. It's, it's, thought, he had 21, bad. 9 and 4. You're 7 and 19. I just think he needs to make a concerted effort to get to the free throw more, take good looks. And like Sean said, these other guys are going to have to knock down shots. I'd love to see Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Max Drews. These guys have got to go off. They, they're going to get open looks. The way their offense and the way their, their counters and plays are set up, they're going to get open looks. they got to be able to knock them down. They shot 17 of 35 from 3 the other night and barely won by three points. And a lot of that is because of Jimmy. He did not play to the, the, the caliber he set the first nine games of the playoffs when he had the huge game against the Bucks and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. He just hasn't been that same player in his last nine games of the playoffs. He needs to reach that level if they're going to win this series. There's no way around it. They're not going to shoot 48% from three every game. They're not going to hit 17 threes every game. So they need that from him, especially – a lot of people thought Tyler Hero was going to be back for game three. He was ruled out yesterday. We don't know. It's up in the air. If they're not getting Tyler Hero back, they need playoff Hemi Butler back at some point. And tonight would be a great time to start. Uh, Nuggets favored, barely, two and a half. Still favored in the series. Doesn't feel quite as confident as it did uh, before this thing started. You still buying that? It, it shouldn't feel as confident. The, the, the Heat acquitted themselves well in Denver. Yes, they lost game one, and, and they, they, they finished – tough and like Chandler mentioned they keep starting slow but they've showed that they can play with this team they show that they can match up strategically and they show that they have the firepower to make it happen they do have to knock down shots they do need a better Jimmy they do need Bam to continue to do what he's doing but they're a live dog in this team so it should be a close one and at the same time you best believe Denver they hear everything they got mm. coach Malone's message loud and clear and when you look at the history of the finals when the series is tied one to one 
Whoever wins game three goes on to have an 80% chance of winning the championship. So everybody on that court tonight, everyone that brings tonight knows what's at stake. You get a huge upper hand if you can find a way to get game three. Um, so I look for Denver to also come out and they need to throw the first punch. They gotta be physical. We know what they're gonna do offensively, but they have to lock in. Guys like Michael Porter, they have to step up. They have to be dialed. They have to take on this challenge by Malone to play harder than the next. And that's hard to do when you're going against Miami Heat. Is there a team we trust more in this thing? Because for me, it feels very equal, weirdly enough. Depend, you know. You got Miami asking if they miss so many shots. In, I mean, not Miami. Denver's getting asked if they miss so many shots in the fourth because they're young and this is their first time in the finals. I think the natural inclination is to trust Miami more. They've been Crazy. here. They have Eric Spolster. They have Jimmy Butler. Um, they have Kevin Love, who has like this exorbitant finals experience. <laughs> uh, I trust them a little more, and then they're at home, so that helps. It's crazy. But we're, we're taking a less talented team. We're trusting a less talented team just because of that yep. coaching, because of that experience, because of Jimmy Butler's just the way he can get his guys going. So it is interesting. I think Denver gets it done tonight. I think they bounce back. I think they're going to play extremely hard. I think they're going to get off to a good start. Um, what is happening? I just got an email from Relax the Back. Whatever okay, that well, that's is. important. Oh. I'm glad we got that update in the show. Uh, <laughs> important email. But yeah, I, I fully expect Denver. They've been the best team all year long. They know this is their chance right now, and whoever wins this game, Again, the odds are in their favor to win the series. So this is huge for, for both of them, but I expect it to be a highly competitive close game. We mentioned Tyler Hero, um, and he ruled out for – but any chance we see him? I, I, I think there's definitely a chance. I think he is moving closer. He's still, he's still a soreness in that hand that he fractured in game one of, of the playoffs. Um, but I, I think they want to make sure he's right, and this series is also 1-1. One, one. They're coming off a win. Um, and, you know, they'll never – they might never admit to it. But, I mean, I think when you look at how this team has won – Without him, Duncan Robinson, I, I know for sure, that's a guy that's probably not playing right now if Tyler Hero is healthy. Um, so mm. how, how they handle his return, making sure he's 100%, I think that is definitely what they're focused on. But right now, still has swelling, some soreness in that hand. Here's my thing. I hate when guys are like, oh, he's going to mess up the flow. He's going to mess up the system. And, and No, this kid is a guy who they've paid, who they've invested in, who's a critical part of their future, who's an absolute bucket, by the way, and that's exactly what they need. So I believe in Eric Spolstra to be able to plug him in into spots, bring him off the bench, give him that lift that they badly need with Caleb Martin sick and not playing like he did in, last, in the last series, with Gabe Vincent's ankle bothering him, with Kyle Lowry up and down, with Duncan Robinson, everything he's going through. Tyler Hero is a great basketball player, and he can help them, and he's one of the guys on their team that can go get a bucket, that can ISO, that at the end of the shot clock can make a play and score points. That's exactly what they need. It's the team that gets bogged down, they play slow, and Tyler Hero is the opposite. He can actually give them that breath of fresh air. He can go get a bucket, but... Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, Sir? they're shocking outfits. Sir. But also, I'm, I, I hear that he still has swelling in the hand, and it's his shooting hands. That right. plays a huge difference in his... Chandler sources. Progress, yeah. yeah. That if it was his non-shooting hand, I bet you he'd be playing, you know, last series. But it's it's tough, and you don't want this to linger. But I look on the other side. He's got all off-season to heal this thing. If yeah. you can play and you can go help the team win tonight, I agree. go do it. Well, I guess it depends on what happens, right? Yeah. It, 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 the, the things he provides is exactly what Miami needs right now. They need that ball handler. And... If they want to target Jokic in the way they did at the end of last game, attacking him at the top of the key, a lot of dribble handoff stuff, a lot of then running into pick and roll, he's the best pick and roll player on their team. Him and Bam, pick and roll is one of their pet plays, one of their pet actions they get into whenever they get down. If they can get Jokic in pick and roll, and Jamal Murray, another defender that teams like to attack, that completely changes the Miami Heat offense. Again, the Miami Heat were the worst scoring offense in the league during the regular season. That They were second in scoring in the postseason, and only behind the Denver Nuggets. So mm. if they can add more scoring points to that, it gives them a better shot to win this series. And they're going to need to be where they're at right there, 111 to win the game, 115, 120 to win these games. And Tyler Hero only helps. Yes, he will hurt a little bit on defense. But so does Duncan Robinson. So right. they're playing zone, and they all know how to play this zone. So you, you got to take that with the plus with the with the bonus you get from him on offense so let's get back out there and can you play on a broke hand like is that like a thing i you mean the off? fact that it's been this long it's mostly healed i would assume and again it's his shooting hands that's yeah. tough he's dribbling he's passing he's doing everything with that hand but again this goes back to spo he's not just gonna change everything because tyler here is back he's not gonna limit yeah. anyone's minutes or to not play duncan robinson no he's gonna he's not gonna fix what's not broken but Tyler Hero can help, and you can implement in some part of the game tonight to give them a boost and to give them some scoring. We get one more outfit at least, though. 
And good for us. He's been ruled out tonight, Shams? Or nothing yet? He's been ruled out tonight. He's been ruled out. One more outfit at least. Yeah. Lucky, Another lucky bucket eyes. Hat. Um, the Corgi's back. It's the Nate Silver of dogs. Uh, I oh, feel brother. It. Here's the deal. Once you get a big one wrong, yeah. do we have to listen to you anymore, Corgi? No, his credibility's out the window. <laughs> yeah, what are she we She does have Denver in six, or she, I'm not even sure. Um, which I guess could work. It's a she. Oh, confirmed she. Can we get a French oh, bulldog to do this? Okay, I trust the Frenchie better. The, can Gator do this? I'm going to stay away yeah. from the French bulldog oh. comments. <laughs> no, you really can. I, my pug used to do it. Yeah, you can do it. Uh, scoop time. That time of year. Always on the yeah. phone. Busy, busy, busy. What do you have for us? No doubt. Beep, um, beep, 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 beep. So James Harden, he's going to be a free agent oh, uh, no. going into free agency this, this next month or so. Uh, my sense is that James Harden is really torn right now on his free agency decision. I don't think he knows today which way he's going to go, but you look at the two teams that it'll come down to, the Philadelphia 76ers staying in Philly or going and returning to Houston, his roots, his family there in Houston right now. I'm told James Harden is torn on where this is going to go. <laughs> wow. I, I would expect conversations over the next few weeks, especially within the Sixers, Nick Nurse, Daryl Morey meeting with them. Um, and the Rockets will have upwards of 60, 70 million in cap space. So as we get closer, June 30th, July 1 gets closer, you, you, would, you would meet and do meetings and, and see exactly what both teams' visions are. But whichever way this goes, I'm told it's going to be close. And I think any sudden movement as we get closer is certainly possible. So Chandler, when you look at it, going in, Philadelphia gives you a ch chance, I think, right now to win Houston up-and-coming potential team. How do you handle the next few weeks if you're James Harden? Well, again, I don't know if this is a leverage play, if this is because he just went through the whole thing saying he wants Doc Rivers out, apparently, and they hired a new coach. Which <laughs> th th that seemed to be the guy James Harden wanted. And he knows that they don't have a chance of winning in Houston, right? So I, I know his time was there. I was there with him. It's a great city. It's a great town. They love him. They would love to have him back. They have zero Who chance. Who would love to love the fans? The fans. Or the, or the the, I mean, the, I don't even know if the players would necessarily want them back. I think yeah. Kenny Martin hit it on the head the other day. Where this could possibly stunt the growth of a lot of these kids. Like Jalen Green wants to be on the other side of the wing, watching this happen. Uh, you know, <laughs> going into the prime years of his career. So I don't really understand it either way. I don't know if this is the guy that you want mentoring these young guys. I don't know if this is the guy that is going to help these guys grow. And when I'm James Harden. Sure, maybe it's another year on a max deal or something that mm. they're going to offer that Philly won't. But you have zero chance of winning in Houston, and you go retire there when you stop playing in a couple years or whenever that may be. But it just doesn't make sense to me at all because all he needs is a championship to really stamp, and he's not getting that in Houston. This is a guy who took less money last year, right, to, to bring in P.J. Tucker, to supposedly build a championship core. This is a team, they, they went seven games with the Celtics. They were... Just right there. He had two big shots in that series. He had a couple of great games. He's told us time and time again, look, James, you've told us time and time again that you want to win a championship. That's all you have left to do in your, in your career. He'll be 34 years old before he plays again. I don't understand why this is under consideration unless it's a wide gap in money and years. And then that makes sense, sure. But if he wants to win a title, this shouldn't even be a conversation. He's, he's already taken less money. They're coming back with whatever the offer is now. I'm sure it's an incredible amount of money. And it, it, it shouldn't be a decision. I don't understand what he looks like on the Houston Rockets. What does that do for Kevin Porter Jr.? What does that do for Jalen Green? Two guys who need the ball in their hands. You're trying to groom to be your stars, as mm -hmm. Kenya Martin said earlier this week. Yep. What are we doing? They have, what, the, thir the third pick? They have another high pick. They have another person they're going to slot in there to, to try to build around. James will come and stunt that. You mentioned earlier, they'll win a couple more games with James, which is going to hurt their future as well as they lose draft Takes picks. them out of the tanking sweepstakes with him because gonna, they're going to win more games with him. But I'm with you. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it sense for no either sense. way. I don't know why James would want to go to a way worse team. He's playing with the MVP in a great town with a real championship contention next year. Why leave that? He's on the Porsche lot, and he's saying, I'll go get that Corolla. Yeah, <laughs> right? I will leave right now. And the Porsche people are like, yeah, all right, bro. <laughs> like, very confused. And the coach thing, too, I think, is big. All, by all accounts, he wanted Doc out, got Doc. Then you leave? It doesn't make any sense to me. But Also, Daryl Morey comes from Houston to Philly, and he's going to shoot Yeah. Him right. It's just, it's all. Uh, it makes no the NBA sense. Is crazy. Make it make sense. Um, more coaching news, though. Yes. Uh, Frank Vogel, uh, 
his coaching staff is set. He signed a five-year, $31.25 million contract to be the head coach of the Suns. Then he gets Kevin Young on a deal to be his lead assistant, his associate head coach, over $2 million. And then David mm. Fisdale is Woo! now coming aboard as well. He's getting around $1.5 million on his coaching deal. So this is a Suns coaching staff that for their top three guys, their head coach, their, their lead assistant, their second lead assistant, a total of $10 million per year for those three guys, Vogel, Kevin Young, and David Fisdale. And I think you're starting to see a real, I think elite coaching staff being built in Phoenix right now. Matt Ishbia, James Jones, they, they're showing that they're willing to pay. Now we'll see if it turns into results and how Frank Vogel fills out the rest of his staff. They got all three of these dudes for the price of Monty Williams. Yeah. Well, that is that is an outlier, isn't it? <laughs> I will say, David Fisdale is the man. He Love. was my guy in Memphis. He is the coolest. He's a J.B. Bickerstaff. He's a, he knows how to relate to players. He knows how to get the best out of players while still demanding respect from them. Uh, he's going to be huge. KD's going to love him. Devin's going to love them. He's going to have a lot of success, and I think he gets another shot at a head coaching job. Yeah, I'm excited for Fizz on this one. Um, yesterday, Frank Vogel, as you saw, was walking around. He had his press conference, a big introduction time, and DeAndre Ayton is a big subject. Uh, what's the deal with that? Here he is. Yeah, well, I think he can be one of the best centers in the league. You know, and I think he's shown that at, at times throughout his career. You know, I, I know he showed it when we played him in the playoffs a couple years back, and he shot about 80% from the field and, uh, and, and deterred every, every drive, every, every cut, every uh, uh, effort to attack the basket. You know, he can be a big-time deterrent. And, um, you know, there's still areas that, that uh, he can grow offensively. Um, but I'm intent on, uh, on really connecting with him and, you know, restoring him to, uh, you know, to an all-star level player. It's crazy to me that we're still asking, what do we do with DeAndre Ayton? I, I don't get it, but what do you think the future for him is in Phoenix? The fan theory is Frank Vogel wants him. Look what he did with Roy Hibbert. Look what he did with all of the bigs he had for the Lakers. Uh, I would imagine he does too. And, and the thing for them is they saw what the market was for him last year. Then they wrapped him up in a deal. We don't know what the market would be like this summer. I think they're going to figure out what the market is for Chris Paul as well. They they have to figure out, one, if they if they can even get anything for him, if it's better off to just keep him. Hmm. And two, if it makes sense for Frank Vogel, and it sounds like it does, sounds like he's excited, excited to have him and figure out what he can do. This is a number one overall talent. He was taking number one overall over Luka, over Trey Young, and nobody really batted an eye because he was that good at <laughs> Arizona. So, yeah, if you can make something out of, out of, out of DeAndre Ayton, in the same conference where you have Nikola Jokic, obviously, and Anthony Davis and, 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 and Kevon Looney and all these bigs that you had to deal with in the playoffs, you got to make something out of him best you can. Yeah, and say what you want about the kid and the struggles that he's had in Phoenix. He's a top five center in the NBA, and he has extreme value on this team and this roster, and he's a great piece to put with KD and Devin Booker. And for him... It's a huge breath of fresh air that he gets a new fresh start with a new coach because clearly there were issues with him and Monty, and now this is almost a, a new beginning for him, and I, I, I think they keep him. I think he has a really big year. That's crazy. We're always talking about it. All right, we're taking a break here. When we come back, Matt Barnes is in the studio, ready to say words, hey. all of which will be – none of it will be controversial. <laughs> I know this for a fact. What's up, buddy? Hey, we'll be back. What's up? Comfy, I see, huh? I know, yeah. I like this. Good, How you doing? Good, you? Yeah, I like up, this buddy? whole vibe. Matt Barnes, are you kidding? Authentic, I don't see no competition yet. Call on them, baby. Our guest today played 14 seasons in the NBA, won a title in 17, and of course, one of the hosts of All the Smoke. Matt Barnes is here. And can we just... I, the podcast world is crazy, right? Yeah. But you guys have one of the biggest ones. Did you have any idea all the smoke would be like this? No clue. We didn't even know what a podcast <laughs> was, to be honest with you, when we started. We were just both doing Fox and ESPN, and we knew that we can kind of get away with a little bit more uh. from an extracurricular standpoint uh, <laughs> on a podcast. And uh, it was kind of a struck lightning in a bottle when, I ha when show someone from Showtime happened to connect the dots, and I pitched them our idea, and they didn't really know we had. I didn't know we had, but they took a chance. And, uh, you know, our first year out, we won Sports Podcast of the Year and kind of mm -hmm. cemented us in this space, and we've been, uh, you know, and enjoying it and then learning ever since. All those years of you guys being outspoken and saying whatever you wanted. Paid Who off. knew it paid off? Paid off. off. <laughs> paid off. It paid See? off after basketball, yeah, exactly. not during. It cost me during basketball. Yeah, we'll get to that uh, at, so <laughs> at some point. Um, I want to start with a guy who I think he thinks he can get away with a little more than he probably can, but John Morant. We had the Adam Silver announcement um, that he's not going to make an announcement until after the finals about what's going to happen. 
Was it a good move the way Adam handled, handled it? And <clears throat> what kind of a suspension are you thinking? I think they should have just kept the information to themselves <laughs> because they knew they weren't going to announce it and they had the world buzzing because they said they didn't want to distract the finals. But now we're still buzzing because we're like, <laughs> what's the deal? If he's going to hold off and announcing, it's got to be a huge suspension. So I think they should have kept it to themselves. <clears throat> On the flip side with Morant, I mean, image is everything. You know what I mean? I think these young kids, we can't really speak to what it's like feeling like you have to show every moment of your life on social media so people can validate you, stamp you, and give you likes. Uh, my whole thing is, I'm not for playing with guns, but if you know you guys like to play with guns, stop filming yourself. Like, they're telling on themselves every single time. Right. So I don't get, like, why you keep telling on yourself? So I think the reason why this punishment has to be so harsh with Ja is because he's, he's the next guy to kind of carry the NBA from an American standpoint. You know what I mean? They're the, 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 the European international players have dominated the MVPs and, you know, they got a handful of those guys in the top five right now. But Ja is along with Tatum and Booker and some of these younger guys that are supposed to carry the torch after KD, Steph and LeBron leave. So I think he has to understand the bigger picture of what is being asked of him. And then also, you know, once you start getting these shoe deals and these big drink deals, like you have to just walk a little different. So. I wish the best for him because we all know he's such a tremendous talent and he's must see basketball. But I also think he needs to learn a lesson. And, 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 and unfortunately, this time I think it's going to be harsh, but I think he'll learn this time around. It's like Matt said, he's <clears throat> built up as one of the marquee athletes in this league. He has yeah. the Nike deal. It's the power, well, he doesn't have the power A deal anymore. Do they take it? He's, yeah, they took that away. He, he's uh, he, he's one of the you know NBA's putting him on their marquee. They're they're marketing that team, a small market team, for primetime games and, and on network games. He has that responsibility. I know he's only 23 years old, but he has to understand what that is. And like you said, we only know about this stuff because he showed us. <laughs> we wouldn't have known about any of this unless he showed us. The only thing we got to see that we weren't supposed to see was when the strip club leaked the picture right. Oops. doing right. and that's what strip clubs look like and Surprise. that was and that was kind of cool <laughs> yeah you know that was like kind of fly like, like, yeah. rain in there yeah. but outside of that like we should have never like you said we should have never known anything else yeah so we only know what they showed us and whether on accident or purpose or however you want to say it so he could have prevented all this he had a, plenty of reasons to do it and he, he chose not to so and now that's what he's gonna that's the, what he's got the problem is it's the second time right like you do it once and i thought the suspension was a little lenient in the beginning like eight games wasn't that yeah. big of a deal and with everything, how sensitive the world is to this. Again, it's all self-inflicted. It's it's, and so I'm hoping he's taking this time to kind of, you know, find himself and get a <laughs> smaller circle and find people he can actually trust and rock with and enjoy this life. People would do oh, unimaginable uh, things to be in the position I mean, you're in. Things. Don't ruin that. Like, <laughs> well, and you, just, you know what I mean? By the way, I worry too, though, if if he is suspended an entire season, if and he doesn't truly get it. That's a lot of idle time for a guy who doesn't seem to handle idle time. As sad as it is, it could be the worst it thing be. for him to suspend him for the whole year to give him all that time on his hands with the people that he's surrounding himself with. So I think it's going to be extreme. I think it's going to be close to 50 games. I don't think it's going to be a whole season. I don't mm -hmm. think so either. I think it too. It goes back to something that I've talked about for a while. It's just there's no veterans in the locker room anymore. You know, when I, we came in the league, I had vets that were 38, 39, 40. Some played, but most of them just contributed to the culture and, and mm -hmm. learning and teaching. And although Stephen Adams is a veteran, I guess he wasn't enough to kind of get through these guys. But there were guys when I came in the league that would put you in a headlock or, or, or do some, <laughs> do some other more. stuff to you. Like, yo, you got to, you know, you, you, you have a, Tremendous opportunity right now, but go ahead. I saw Shannon. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Adams. I mean, you, you make a great point. He spoke up a week before the, a couple weeks before the Denver yeah. Nuggets situation, uh, in the situation in Denver happened. <clears throat> so, if you were a teammate of John ja Morant, what's your like direct message to him? Headlock. I would, I would probably sit. Him, yeah, sure. no, I'd probably sit him down and and and, and roll a little joint and uh, <laughs> like let's talk about this. You know, because like honestly, it sometimes it really just takes to show that you care. Sometimes you can't just talk down and talk mm. at people. You have to go down to their level and bring them up with you. So I think it's just really showing them that you care, sitting down, having a conversation with them. And almost if it doesn't get through initially, just staying on them because under, making him understand how important he is to this team and to this game. You have a good point about the vets, too, because nowadays it's who makes the most money, who scores the most points, but it wasn't like that back no. in the day. Like, if, if I would do this back in the day or James Harden do this in Houston, like Marcus Camby, yeah. Sam Down, these yeah. guys were on yeah. your head to fix it and to address it right away. Stephen Adams, as much as a good leader and a good dude he is, he has no juice, he has no say over yeah. John Morant's actions. Fair. So it's, it's, it's different now, it's a different time, it's a different era, and the best player does what he wants. 
So, Matt, you want to ring with the Warriors? Yes. Bob Myers just stepped down Man. as president and GM. How do you think that's going to impact them as an organization? That's going to be huge. I mean, Bob's been one of the most impactful front office guys for the last 10 years. Um, and I think sometimes stuff just runs its course. I mean, being on a championship team, but then being on a, a part of a dynasty where every year the expectations are championship or nothing. Uh, and he helped build that. So I just think he needed some time off. Um, you know, I heard some and I can't confirm this stuff and it wasn't from him that, you know, just the ownership was kind of overstepping, you know, their bounds. And I don't know if ownership actually has bounds because it is their team. Uh, <laughs> but I heard, you know, I heard that. So I think it's a standpoint where Bob's going to take a step back. Um, I honestly thought that if Palinka didn't, you know, make the moves he made and the Lakers didn't make a run, it was going to be a smooth transition for Bob to come back home and move into the Lakers front office. Uh, but I think to, to, to credit, uh, excuse me, uh, Bob to come back and, and move into the Lakers front office. But to credit Rob, he did a great job at the trade deadline. The Lakers made this Western Conference final run, so I think he kind of secured his situation. So I see Bob sitting back and waiting for a great opportunity. And someone's going to throw a ton of money at him, and once he's rested and back home with the kids all the time and be like, oh, I think I need to get back <laughs> on the road, I think Bob is going to make a move, and, and wherever he ends up going is going to be a, a huge plus to that organization. I'll say this, as good of a job that is, I don't want to replace yeah. Bob Myers, oh, right? Like tough. everything he's done and, and he's kind of getting out at the right moment. They're kind of on the decline. Is the era over? Is yeah. the dynasty over? Not only are those the questions, but whoever replaces him has huge decisions to make that impact kind of the future of, of this whole organization. Yeah. So whether it's Mike Dunleavy or whoever it is, that, that they're really, really, really big shoes to fill. And this guy, this, this guy, did an unbelievable <laughs> job. I feel like half this show is Chandler telling us jobs he doesn't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, well, the way these coaches are getting paid now, yeah, I might right. start that That's one. serious. <laughs> start thinking about it. I think Jesus. the one thing that Bob, I'm guessing, uh, got through to ownership before he left was the importance of keeping this core intact. I think mm. understanding that it's important to re-sign Draymond. Um, you know, again, he's a guy that doesn't have his numbers jump off the page, but playing with him and playing against him for so long, he is the heart and soul of that team, and I think everybody knows that. Steph, Clay know that, and I know they've been advocating for him. So to be able to keep that core together, I think, was Bob's last goal, and then now he's chilling. Well, I mean, from the outside looking in, it, it, it looks like they're almost forced to pick Draymond, Jordan Poole. Like, what, what do you think they should do going forward? You, you said you want them to keep Draymond. Did they, you sit them down, you try to work it out? I don't know if that can be, you know, I actually had a, I, I was doing the Kings um, Warrior Series in Sacramento, and I got a chance to sit down and, and fellowship with Draymond after one of the games, since you like that word, right? Well, that, 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 that can mean a lot of different things. Um, and he told me, he's just like, you know, I lost my voice almost until February in that locker room. And he said, I, I saw a lot of slippage, but I wasn't really in a position to kind of put my foot down and be myself and kind of organize things. And he said, by the time he felt comfortable to do that, it was February. So that was a lot of bad habits that kind of went awry for almost a, you know three quarters of the season. And it was a little too late to you know kind of fix it once um, you know stuff hit the fan come playoff time. I wasn't worried obviously you would like to see Jordan Poole play better he was given a lot of money and he was great in last year's playoffs you would like to see him better but I wasn't necessarily watching that and I think Chandler can attest to that we watched body language and the way he blew off Draymond and the way he wouldn't look at Steph when Steph was talking you're I mean you're dealing with Hall of Famers mm -hmm. and although like I said I don't know what their relationship is and if it can ever be repaired with Draymond but at least pretend you're listening at some <laughs> point and I just think he's one of those younger players that you know he got a lot of money uh, played very well for that money but the next year, he didn't come out and perform. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they could possibly be shopping him, which is crazy because to think, because two years ago, you were thinking, hey, this is the guy we're going to hand the torch to, right. to, to, yep. to, to run with. I just look at it like, too, like, if, if you're Jordan Poole, can, is that something you can get over? Like, you do punch in the face and the whole world see it. it wasn't as bad, right, hearing it, but when you see the video, you're yeah. embarrassed. And, 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 and Chandler, you know, like, stuff like this happens all the time. But, again, like, the strip club thing, like, this should have never got leaked. Yeah. yeah. Like, to me, they need to find out whoever leaked that and out that person because this should have never got leaked. And I think what, man, obviously getting punched in the face and knocked out is messed up. I don't know what that's like. I don't ever want to know what that's <laughs> like. Um, but I think just having to deal with that every single single day your family sees it your friends see that and then you have to go to work and try to mend this because now there's memes and all this other BS that comes with it I think if it would have stayed under wraps it possibly and then this again this is a speculation could have been a little bit easier to deal with but I don't know if there is any mending that but to me you just have to have a line of respect from a standpoint and when we're on that court it's a common goal yeah that's crazy you're right he's with these guys you think he would at least 
I mean, Steph was not happy in that no. moment. Well, That's even him, big. he needs to be aware that there's cameras everywhere. Even if this was something that wasn't his fault or whatever, you got to know what this looks like. And at this moment, this magnitude of the game, uh, you, you can't be doing this. In fairness, though, there was the moment where Anthony Davis sort of looked like he wasn't into the LeBron James yeah. celebration game. Like, sometimes you just forget. Yeah. Anything, even in this day and age. Well, yeah, just we film everybody all day. All We're going to see some funny stuff. Yeah. I, it, it's crazy for Jordan Poole because if you're him, you're sitting there like the organization leaked it. They seemingly took Draymond's yeah. on side. They're thinking about what they're doing. He's got to feel the walls closing in. So it has to be a frustrating situation. Maybe it is something they can sit down and iron out, but mm. I don't know. It looks worse by the day. He, yeah. Steve Kerr is doing Draymond's pod. Like, I know. He <laughs> looks like an outsider. Sides have been chosen. He looks yeah. like an outsider. For sure. Um, so Shams is reporting that Kyrie trying to recruit LeBron Ooh. to Dallas. Thoughts <laughs> on that? The validity of it? The idea of them playing together again? What are his intentions here? I just don't see it happening. I think LeBron has set up stake in California with several houses. And, <laughs> um, you know, his son going to USC now. Uh, his kids getting a little bit older. I don't see him uprooting the family for one year. Mm -mm. Because you got to think, Bronny's all intentions to be in, in two years for Bronny to be in the league. And, and Bron's goal was to play with his son. So I think it's wishful thinking um, by Kyrie. I think the Lakers came out and kind of said, hey, if we're sending our big dog your way, you're sending back Luka. And we all know that's absolutely not happening. <laughs> That'd be amazing. And then from the flip side, if you're the Lakers, you saw what happened with Phoenix. And it's kind of unfair to kind of judge Phoenix because they only had a handful of games together. But they were a very top heavy team with zero depth. And that just doesn't work anymore. So if the Lakers were to go all in on Kyrie, you're giving away a lot of young core pieces that came in and, and really complemented your two stars really well. So I, as much as I would love to see LeBron and Kyrie get back together because I think LeBron is the one vet that can kind of get Kyrie just to focus on basketball. Mm. And if that does happen and Kyrie is able to get with him and we'll freak him because stuff happens so much, we'll forget about all the BS he pulled the last five or six years mm. if he's able to get with LeBron <clears throat> and somehow win something. And I don't know where that would be but because we're in such a what have you done for me lately. So, I mean, I think he understands getting with LeBron will kind of help fix his trajectory and his legacy because it's it's been a little checkered <coughs> when it comes to <laughs> playing basketball, yeah. to say the least. So, um, again, I think wishful thinking, but I just don't see it happening. It's crazy that these clips they're showing, this is seven <clears throat> years ago. It's been like a it lifetime since like we it. saw that Kyrie. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> And, I mean, there's no doubting his, his an unbelievable talent, a, a top five talent, and, you know, arguably one of the greatest ball handlers, one of the greatest finishers. I mean, when this guy is just focused on basketball, there's not you can't name five guys better than him. Yeah. I also think it's like a, it's a chess move, right? It's like Dallas fans, look at me. I'm trying to recruit the best player <laughs> of all times. I'm Optics. changed. I'm ready to fully buy in. But <laughs> yeah. uh, you've gone from a basketball player to a basketball dad. <laughs> and as a new father myself with my first Congrats, boy coming bro. in October, yes, sir. how has that been, you know, coaching? You it's know, awesome. Watching your twins. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, they're 14 now, oh, wow. uh, headed into high school. And um, it was, to be honest with you, it was the reason why I retired. I signed a three-year deal a year. I happened to get to Golden State and won a championship, and I stepped away because I was just felt like I was missing too much time. And, and as a father, traveling, missing birthdays, plays, sporting events, it started wearing on me. Um, so that was the main reason why I retired. And from the second I retired, it was taking pride in hour and 20 minute round trip school drop offs and <laughs> coaching them in every sport they play. But it was just like th those things you miss as a dad. So fast forward, you know, I coach them now. We have a top five AAU team in the country. Thank Shout you. out my little guys. Uh, we're 14 years old. So it's just been a blast to be able to pour into them from a father standpoint, but then also being able to coach them. And, and, and again, being able to coach their, we could be able to keep our core together for like the last five years. So just kind of raising their friends as well. So. Uh, fatherhood is the best job in the world, and it, it's why I've turned down other jobs that, that have been nice, but they wanted me to travel too much. And I just, nothing comes before my kids anymore. So if I'm able to fit in, you know, media, which I am now, it kind of has to go around my children. So there's nothing like fatherhood, and, and, and congratulations on the little man coming, because it's, it, it's a blast and it's a, it's a journey. Chandler, what if he hates basketball? Oh, he's going to. Okay, sure. fair enough. I just <laughs> want to make he's sure we were mentally to. prepared for that. We're taking a really quick break. We'll be we'll be right back. Matt Barnes not going anywhere. We have a lot more questions. Run it up. Yeah, he's back. Hate run it up. Run it back. Welcome back. Um, we were talking basketball in, <laughs> uh, in the break there. <laughs> Matt Barnes still here. I know we want to talk finals, Chandler. Yeah, it's Matty, time. let's talk finals. Who right now is in control of this series? <sighs> I don't know if anybody's necessarily in control. It's 1-1. I think Miami went in and did their job, but 
I've been impressed with their confidence. You know, when, when they lost game one and, and, and you saw Jimmy in the podium, it's just like, you know, everyone's smiling, you know, having a good time, understanding we just need four games. So a confident team is, is a very dangerous team. And for them to go in to Denver uh, and make that fourth quarter run and, and pull that one out just showed me a lot. And it, but it, it shouldn't surprise me because they've been doing this since the beginning of the playoffs. You know, they played possum all season, uh, nearly get eliminated <laughs> in the play-in, and then you run through Milwaukee, Boston, and now you're 1-1 in the finals versus Denver. So um, they feel confident. Uh, with that being said, uh, I just love the chess move between Spolster and Malone, two of the best coaches in the game. And I know that Denver will be ready to do what they need to do tonight uh, to, to, I think, take game three. But I think this is going to be a great series. So, Matt, you had some legendary battles in your day. So your matchup against Jimmy Butler, Ooh. how are you guarding him right uh, now? You, you know, I was, I was the lucky guy that, you know, got to take the best score every single night. So <laughs> to me, it's, 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 it, it's multiple looks. The one thing I don't like about the game right now is I feel like the primary defender gets switched off too easy. Mm -hmm. Like they set these fake screens. To me, if you're the guy that's supposed to guard the best player, you're fighting through you screens, you're them. going over, you're going under, you're being physical with them, you're giving them different looks. And Chandler would tell you, you know, anytime you get cooking, I have to give you a hard foul. It's <laughs> coming, and I got five more strategically hard fouls coming at you. But you want to make these guys work. You you know what I mean? I mean, one thing, you know, guarding Kobe was, you know, you know, great scores are always going to be good defense, but you just want to make them work. If, if Kobe or Jimmy or KD were going to score 30 on me, I want you to take 30 shots. I want you to know that I'm going to put you on the ground a couple times with some hard fouls. If you shot make me too much, I'm going to hard foul you. So it's just kind of sending a message knowing that it's going to be a long night, but, the, you know, great offensive players are going to get what they want. You just want to make them earn it. Um, so that's what I would do with Jimmy. So you were fined 14 times in your career. That's it. Which of the, I know, right? I feel like that's, that's like, actually surprising. But it, was for like a, it was for like a half. It was for like a half a million, though. <laughs> like, okay, I, like, so that yeah. good. That, now that, I want to know which one of those was the one that was money best spent. Do you remember? <sighs> Man, I was. But I used to get fined for like pushing people. I get I remember I got suspended two games yeah, you can't for pushing. Do that, man. Yeah, right. Like at least let me throw a punch. Like I remember I pushed, I pushed Serge Ibaka one time with that Clipper, in, in, during that Clipper thing when he used to try to bully Blake. And I think I got like two, a two or three game suspension. Phew. So, I think my suspensions and, and fines were more reputation. I don't really think I got any really like, oh, I got him good. I'm, I'm gonna take that fine. Like mine was talking back. Like and you appealed pushing. all of them. Oh, absolutely. And 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 Kiki used to yeah. I'm thinking he's a UCLA guy. He's going to have some leniency. Kiki didn't mess with me at all. <laughs> Kiki, I'm sorry, Matt, but this, you know what I mean? So um, I can't say that any of them are my money well spent. Um, I wouldn't take any of them back because, okay, it, again, it, it was who I was. I was just a competitor and, and, and was willing to do anything to win. But I wish I would have got to earn more. Like, at least let me throw a couple punches if you want to suspend me two yeah. or three games. Did you do any that you regret, like trash talking anyone's mom or anything like that? Maybe. Were you on that team then? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was crazy, man. And 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 sending my best to that family and, and and Mrs. Harden, but she was talking reckless to me. Like she said some things that I was just like, "There's no way that's a woman's voice that's saying this to me." And I didn't know who she was. So you know me, and it was so loud. It was during the playoffs. I mouthed something that I probably shouldn't have mouthed. If, if I would have known it was his mom, I probably wouldn't have said what I said. But that was a big one. That was like fifty or sixty-five thousand. Wow. That was a big fine. <laughs> That's so much for words. That was a heavy hitter. I, those words were. You were there. Those <laughs> were some good darts. Words. I, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Was, what, what, what did this guy say? What did he uh, say? Not, 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 not for TV. Yeah. yeah not for imagine TV. so. Fifty, not 50 for racks. TV. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's mom. Mm. Harden's mom, shout out. She's like yes, in no, it. No, she got me. She got me. And, but, you know, after, uh, again, I, I'm someone who lost my mom, have the usmo, uh, uh, utmost respect for, for moms and what they go through. I just didn't know who she was. And I was thinking after okay. I said, I'm like, she has to be someone's mom. Because she's, <laughs> cause she's sitting courtside right underneath the hoop. So I'm just That's like, she late. has to be someone important. But after, you know, it was like I said, yeah, Michelle, it was definitely too late. But I was able to, to find her and, and try to apologize. And it took two or three times for her to actually at least shake her head to accept my apology. And I think Mother's Day was right around that time, so I gave her some flowers, yeah, too. Oh, that's but, nice. uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was in the heat of the battle, man. You just, you, I'm trying to go to war every time, and, and, and if some people get in the way, sometimes they might catch a strike. <laughs> it is crazy, though, complete side topic. You, people would think they, just because they buy court oh, side tickets, oh, they oh, say oh, whatever you crazy shit for sure. Unbelievable, and it, it, it's getting further, not necessarily on the court side, but just fans in general throwing stuff at players, and when they're walking in the tunnel, like, I don't that's like trash. that. And, and, and my whole thing is don't say nothing to me you wouldn't say to my face right. on the street.
Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you have enough balls to say that in my face, I'll respect you. But I know 99% of the time it's because they know that we're kind of in a cage and we can't really do anything. Yeah. So. Man. All right, so your championship season, the, the 17 Warriors. I've talked with Kevin about this before. I think hmm. it's really tough to see any team beating them. We, we go all over, 96 Bulls, everybody. Uh, is, so you, is that got to be the most dominant team you've played on, right? Yeah, I mean... I think what, what, what stood out to me the most about that team was how egoless it was. I mean, if you think you're bringing in a rock star coach, you have Steph Curry, you have Klay Thompson, you have Draymond Green, you have Andre Iguodala, you have Sean Livingston, you have David West, and then you bring in arguably the best scorer, peer scorer of our generation, or one of them, um, and to think that they fit seamlessly. And, and I think that's a, a credit to obviously the Warriors welcoming KD, but just KD in general, because KD has been able to, you know, go to Brooklyn, fit in seamlessly, go to Phoenix, fit in seamlessly, mm -hmm. and, and it's rare to see someone who can score the ball that well seamlessly fit in. But to, to answer your question, that was a hell of a team, man. And I think it's hard to compare eras from a standpoint of Shaq. There, you know, Shaq was a whole nother, and I, as much as I love Draymond, there was no guard nah, there's nothing to do a Shaq, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of different kind of comparing who would have did this and could they have beat Michael, but this team had guys, three or four guys, they can give you 30 to 40 points any night, and there weren't too many teams in NBA history that can say that. And their chemistry was, was, was crucial, and I think that's what's most important you know, fighting up these up and down battles and, and, and the ebbs and flows of the season. And that team was on one page the entire time. And it's almost why you see, you know, Steve Kerr not necessarily naming no names, but that that locker room is not used to people pouting and mm -hmm. and, and and kind of brushing people off. Like it, it's always been for the betterment of the team. And if these superstars can do it, how do you not do it? So um, that was a hell of a team. Uh, I just wish, you know, I came in that season when KD went down yep. and, you know, played a handful of games and literally the game he came back I had like the worst ankle sprain of my life going into the playoffs so I really didn't get a chance to play and that oh. so what kind of what broke my heart was because I was in the mix I came right in playing you know 20 to 23 minutes a game and I was in that rotation I'm just like oh I'm finally here like this is <laughs> it's gonna be a cake oh. and you know really literally the game so I never I, I played 10 minutes with KD KD came back uh, I got hurt that game, and 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 that was kind of it. But that team overall was incredible. Yeah, speaking of that, you brought that up. You you once said that you didn't count that as a championship because <laughs> no. you got hurt the week yeah. before. No, I mean, yeah, my whole thing is like, you know, Chandler. I've I've always been someone that never had anything handed to me. I had to grind the entire time, and I, and I and I wouldn't want it any other way because I had such a, an appreciation for the journey. And I finally get to a point where I'm on a team where I have a perfect role. <laughs> And I got hurt. You know, I would have been the guy out there guarding Kawhi. I would have been the guy out there guarding LeBron in the finals. And the fact that I couldn't do that because of his bum ankle uh, really hurt me. So it wasn't that I didn't appreciate the ring. I just didn't. It doesn't like it, it sat in, in it, it sat in its little jar or excuse me, it sat in its case on, <laughs> on the bookshelf. And I was going to ask that because you didn't want it. I don't wear it. It wasn't that I didn't want it. It's just I just don't count it. And, and the reason how it got it, it's been some crazy story that I didn't want it. What happened was like they had, they did a special ring ceremony for me and I came back and my kid the twins got rings too, and it was in this big old box and I went back and watched the game. So the the, the PR guy Raven Ritter was like, hey, let me put this in this office for you till the game's over. We bounced early, the office was locked, and I'm just like, damn. So it went like almost a year and a half with <laughs> before. Oh my God. Like they delivered it to me somehow on ESPN one day while we were filming, like they brought the ring and I hadn't awesome. seen it, wasn't really thinking oh, about wow. it. But again, I appreciate just the opportunity and the organist, my favorite organization and, 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 and the people there are great. But yeah, I'm, I'm someone who needed to earn everything and I just didn't feel like I earned that. So nonchalant, a year and a half later. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. Get the ring back. Yeah. Like, get a ring. I'd be like, I need it like today. Like cleaning. <laughs> no, I'm going to need my 85 I, diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need it now. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned that you would want to run for political office maybe at some point. So yeah. Senator Barnes, first yeah. thing you do is what? Um, uh, what struck my, uh, my, my eye in this was I'm from Sacramento and Kevin Johnson was the mayor. And to me, on, uh, at first, it wasn't so much on the political side. It was more just I saw what he did to his former neighborhood and his former neighborhood. Mm -hmm. murders were happening. My aunt got killed, throat slashed, and left in the gutter in mm -hmm. that same neighborhood. So to, to see what he was able to do in that neighborhood and, and the businesses he was able to, be able to bring and kind of the life he brought back into that neighborhood really is just like, yo, if he can do this to Oak Park, I, I want to do this. Um, so, you know, 
fast forward, you know, I've kind of got on the political side a little bit more, just understanding process and policy and, and have helped push bills for the capital. So it's something that I get, you know, at like 34 or 35, I said at 50, I want to do it, but I'm like 43 now and it's getting closer and closer. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, if I'm going to do this, I need, you know, I need to kind of start. So it is something I'm interested in. I mean, if all the cards are, are, are laid how they should be by the time I'm 50, it'll definitely be something that I, you know, I, I, I check out. That would be awesome. We'll help you. I, I don't know how that. much good yeah. we can do. Yeah, you guys can all be in my cabinet. Maybe. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll, we'll Let's do it. Yeah. Matt, never a disappointment. Always great to get you. Thank you guys for having Love me. Love that you were here. Uh, we will take a break. We will be back. Matt Barnes. Run it up. You're running back. Run it up. Run it back. Woo! We get in on the NBA Finals action right from the first tip with FanDuel. Right now, you can make the finals even more exciting with bets that can get you an early W. Bet on race to 15, first basket score, method of first basket score, and more. No better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sports book. Download the app, get a quick W today. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, we got some Dame Lillard talking points. So he was on a Showtime basketball podcast and was asked, where he would, I love that we've gotten to this point in the Dame Lillard time. <laughs> Where would you want to go in a theoretical trade? And he <laughs> said, Miami, obviously, because Bam is my dog. <laughs> I mean, we have gotten to the point where I'll never get traded to here's where I'd want to go. And okay. is it because Bam is his dog or is it because Miami is awesome? And I mean, he's been in Portland for 10 years. Both of those things could be true. Yeah. I mean, listen, would, imagine him on that team with alongside Jimmy and Bam. It kind of gives them this whole other dynamic. And Gabe Vincent has been great, <laughs> but who knows if they're going to keep him and what he's going to demand this summer. But, yeah, I mean, look what they're doing without Damian Lillard. You put a perennial all-star, oh a Hall of Famer, one of the best shooters that can really space the floor for these guys and create offense from the point guard position. It, that, that would be something. So, I mean, shout out to Miami. They're, if they can get him for Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry's contract, and no, like, it's yo, they got Lionel Messi. That's a pretty big. We have, to, we, have to, we have to do an investigation on what Pat Riley has on the Portland Trailblazers, <laughs> but he is one of the better fits for him in the, in the off market. I think the Nets are there as well. I think there's trade packages that mm -hmm. work. And like Chandler mentioned, of course, he lives in Portland, and he, it rains on him 250 <laughs> days a year. Of course he's looking at Miami like, yeah, I remember Bam from the Olympics. He was cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd love to be out there too, My buddy. Dog. It's a, but should they trade the number three pick? Should they? Because that's I think what we're waiting to see is what is the game plan for Portland? Because now would be the time. Miami also is obviously in a position right now to win. So I mean, if you can anyhow, like Man. like I just said, if you can package a bunch of picks or, or dunk, get off Duncan Robinson's contract, and you can somehow get Damian Lillard with this core and this culture, the guy, if, they they're the favorite to win it if they somehow land. Damian Lillard. Right. I'm going to just say in KD's defense, I, apparently the rule is you can't go to the team that is that lost the championship. So he better hope they win and he can oh. go. And then, but you can go to the team that wins the championship. Yeah, apparently, like, I don't know what the rules are with this <laughs> stuff, man. But that yeah, we've made it's up a mess. Lines. It's weird. Uh, look, the, the, there's an actual game tonight. We're kind of excited about it. Uh, Nuggets favored by two and a half. Chandler, do they cover? They cover Ooh. the spread two and a half. I think they win. Pretty, hand pretty easily tonight. Pretty easily. Okay. Yeah, I think it's close, but I think Nuggets pull it out and win by eight. Not feeling that. I got Miami. I got Miami. We're going to be oh. sick of those white shirts. Yeah, we're we going to be sick of the Seven Nation Army oh. by the end of the game. The I, woman I, in I, the I gowns, oh. courtside. Yeah. Is there any, we're going to be sick of DJ Khaled, yeah. Diddy, and Never. Young Miami. Like, I, I Is got there Miami. any way oh. any of the players on the Nuggets went out last night? Can no. you find out, Chandler? <laughs> Chandler? I don't think so. It. They don't strike me as that... Like, they're kind of nerdy. I don't know. Michael Porter Jr. is a little young. Maybe maybe he wins. I don't think so. A dinner a lounge. I'm not wasting a Miami well, night. Dinner doesn't count. I'll tell count. you that much. Dinner doesn't count. I'm not counting that. Um, Eddie, you had Jamal Murray. You did the first basket score thing correctly. The only one of us that's gotten even close. Who do you have for first basket tonight? I'll go with Bam. Really? I just, I don't just know. Get the big fella involved early. Let's find him a bucket. I mean, that's been their pet play all all, play, all series long. Man. Pick and pop to Bam. Little mid-range thing. So, I'll go with Bam. My All track record is speaks for itself. Uh, I'm going plus 800, Michael Porter. I think I did that last game and wasn't hmm. even close. But I think he's gonna, <laughs> I think I think they're gonna make an initiative to get him going, to get him involved, to get him focused on the defensive end, and to have that happen for someone like that, you gotta get a shot going. You gotta get him looks. I like Michael Porter. 
off a nice pin down jumper. Oh, no, oh, you're doing the double. Yeah. Is that a parlay? Can you, can I'm you just do like, that, it's right? like the heat. They just say this stuff. Eventually, you're going to believe it. You're going to be right one out of 10 times. You look brilliant. That's what I'm doing. Right, that's pin what down, I did. Coming left, <laughs> right on the elbow. Do we think Messi will be at the game tonight? Like his first, like. He just signed, right? I know, like, why not? For be like a billion night? dollars and half I of the MLS. He went to Saudi half Arabia Apple, for half a... 400 million a year. That they was... lured him from them. They lured him. Not Jeez. everyone can be bought, Chandler. I mean, he can, but not. just in a different place. Michelle, I'll be at the game. Oh God! I'll be there. Are you wearing this? I'll or Are you gonna wear all white? Uh, no, no. Oh, he has another outfit in yeah. the suit. Go all white. Suit. We go suits at games. You suit? Suits at games. Like full suit, Bob suit. too. Eddie's been with me at a game. Yeah. Tie. Too much. No tie. What? A lot of pictures for like Sean. Show the NBA game. He's an influencer. <laughs> 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 That's gonna do it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back.